This is insane. SpaceX just dropped a massive update, revealing hundreds of new details about the Starship HLS, from its development progress, costs, and technical specs, all the way to the interior design of the lunar lander itself. This is a huge sign of confidence from SpaceX, showing that the company is closer than ever to landing on the moon, Mars, and beyond. So, let's dive in and uncover all the brand new updates right here on Alpha Tech. Starship could deliver 100 gigawatt per year to high Earth orbit within four to five years if we can solve the other parts of the equation. I can't wait to go to the moon. Those were the confident words from SpaceX's top leaders, Elon Musk and Gwynne Shotwell, after weeks of heated back and forth between SpaceX and NASA, or more precisely, between Elon, acting administrator Sean Duffy, and former administrator Jim Bridenstine. Both NASA officials had been openly criticizing SpaceX for its delays. But just a few days ago, SpaceX dropped a massive update packed with new details and hard data about the Starship HLS. And let's just say, it completely silenced the critics while giving us the clearest picture yet of just how extraordinary this lunar vehicle truly is. It all started on September 30th, when SpaceX suddenly dropped a rather cryptic post. In it, they stated that Starship will always be the fastest path to return humans to the lunar surface, and that it's the core element driving NASA's Artemis goal of establishing a long-term, sustainable presence on the moon. The post included a link to SpaceX's website, where they laid out every detail of their lunar mission progress, and it was pretty clear this was SpaceX's counterattack to all the criticism they'd been facing. Before we dive into the update itself, let's take a look at the four official renders SpaceX released alongside the post, giving us our first real glimpse at the latest design of the HLS vehicle. All right, this is the Starship HLS, seen here docked with the super heavy booster at the launch tower moments before liftoff. Take a look at the hot staging ring on the booster. That's the brand new booster version three design. So it's almost certain that HLS will launch atop this upgraded booster sometime in 2026. As for the HLS itself, its exterior doesn't look all that different from the earlier concept renders. Yes, it has four landing legs, but their design is completely different from Falcon 9's. Falcon 9's legs are optimized for flat and stable surfaces, while the HLS legs are built specifically for the uneven terrain of the moon. Shorter, sturdier, and positioned to keep the vehicle's center of gravity low and stable during touchdown. The entire body is painted in that familiar white coating, which helps reflect sunlight and radiation in the harsh environment of space. Near the nose cone, there's a black strip, and no, it's not just a decorative detail. It's actually part of the hot gas thruster system, designed to precisely control the vehicle's attitude and assist with a smooth, controlled landing on the lunar surface. This dark band either covers or marks the location of the thruster nozzles and gas lines, helping to minimize how much lunar regolith gets blasted away compared to firing the main Raptor engines during descent. Just a few meters above that, you'll spot a row of 10 small rounded windows, giving us a peek at the crew compartment behind them, the area where the four astronauts will live and work during their lunar mission. Inside, the crew cabin is positioned on an upper level, accessible by ladders, and connected through a tiered interior layout. At the very top is the docking port, the interface for connecting with Orion, not a secondary fuel tank like on the standard Starship version. According to SpaceX, one single Starship has a pressurized habitable volume of more than 600 cubic meters, roughly two-thirds the pressurized volume of the entire International Space Station, and is complete with a cabin that can be scaled for large numbers of explorers and dual airlocks for surface exploration. And as Elon Musk himself once said, Starship is designed to carry 100 people. That number sounds absolutely insane, 100 people on a single spacecraft. Of course, SpaceX isn't aiming to send that many anytime soon. For now, the lunar variant will likely carry only 4 to 12 astronauts. And really, just two or three missions with that many crew members would already be enough to kickstart Musk's grand vision. Because as he also said, Starship will build Moonbase Alpha. To make that possible, Starship HLS is equipped with two dual airlocks in its lower section, one dedicated to EVA operations and another as a backup. Each airlock is built from advanced composite materials with airtight seals to prevent gas leakage. Inside, 
the spacecraft is fitted with a sophisticated environmental control and life support system, or ECLSS, capable of recycling water from urine and sweat, circulating oxygen and nitrogen through the cabin, and maintaining a comfortable internal temperature between 20 and 25 degrees Celsius. And yes, there's even an elevator system to carry astronauts from the crew cabin down to the lunar surface, about 50 meters below. This platform uses composite cables and electric motors, capable of safely transporting two to four crew members along with their equipment. It's equipped with handrails and anti-jamming sensors, ensuring smooth and safe operation. At the very bottom, the elevator integrates directly with the airlock system, allowing astronauts to step out onto the moon's surface safely, instead of having to jump out of a hatch like some early concepts suggested. And according to SpaceX, these systems have already been tested with NASA astronauts long before this reveal. But that elevator is just one of the 49 milestones SpaceX has achieved in developing the many subsystems, infrastructure, and operations needed to get astronauts to the moon. These include everything from docking tests between Orion and HLS, to landing leg trials on simulated lunar soil, and countless other technical validations. SpaceX emphasized that the vast majority of these milestones have been achieved on time or even ahead of schedule. So clearly the criticisms about delays are largely unfounded. And when it comes to cost, SpaceX made something else very clear. They're funding over 90% of the entire Starship program themselves, including the core Starship system and all of its variants like the HLS. The $2.89 billion NASA contract covers only a small part of it, in total, SpaceX's self-funded investment in Starship is estimated to be around $5.4 to $7.2 billion. In other words, the NASA contract is just a drop in the bucket compared to what SpaceX is putting in. Meanwhile, critics often forget that SLS, which began development a full decade earlier, has already cost U.S. taxpayers roughly $29 billion just for the rocket itself not including the mobile launch platform or the Orion spacecraft. So when you compare the timelines, the costs, and the progress, it's pretty clear who's really pushing humanity forward more efficiently. Besides the HLS, the update also included two other Starship variants, the Depot and the Tanker. These are the core components of SpaceX's orbital refueling architecture, working hand-in-hand -hand with HLS to make missions to the Moon and eventually Mars possible. Let's start with the Starship tanker. Since it's optimized for reuse to keep launch costs low, its exterior looks almost identical to a standard Starship, featuring the same aft and forward flaps, as well as the ceramic heat shield system. The key difference is inside. Instead of a payload bay, most of the interior is taken up by massive fuel tanks. Built on the Starship version 3 platform, the tanker V3 is designed to carry up to 1,200 tons of Methalox propellant. It also features large fuel transfer ports along its midsection, enabling quick and efficient docking with the Starship Depot. Now the Depot variant is a completely different vehicle. It's basically a giant propellant storage ship designed purely for on-orbit operations. There are no flaps, no heat shield, and no need for aerodynamic control, just a clean, optimized structure where the fuel tanks occupy nearly the entire internal volume. It's powered by six Raptor engines and features four refueling ports near the top, allowing it to receive fuel from multiple tanker flights. In essence, it's a floating fuel station, built to stay in orbit indefinitely, never returning to Earth. Its sole purpose, to keep the HLS and other starships topped up for their journeys beyond Earth's orbit. Thanks to the depot, the number of tanker flights needed to fully refuel an HLS mission will drop to just around 10 launches, greatly improving both efficiency and safety. In other words, about two to three weeks before the Artemis III mission, we'll likely see a rapid cadence of Starship tanker launches, each lifting off, transferring fuel to the depot, then returning to Mechazilla for reuse. And when launch day finally arrives, the HLS Starship will lift off, dock with the depot, and begin the refueling process, which takes roughly one to two hours. Once fully fueled, it will then depart directly for lunar orbit, where NASA's Orion spacecraft will already be waiting. After docking with Orion, the astronauts will transfer into the HLS, and from there, begin their historic descent to the moon's surface. But that's still a vision of the future, 
a moment when all three variants, HLS, Depot, and Tanker, are fully operational and working in harmony. So, what exactly does SpaceX need to do to get there? Well, the next key milestones for the HLS program include a long-duration flight test and an on-orbit propellant transfer demonstration. The exact timing depends on the progress of upcoming Starship test flights, which will introduce the new Version 3 architecture. Both of these critical tests are expected to take place sometime in 2026. The orbital refueling capability is what will truly complete the Starship Artemis mission architecture. It will allow the vehicle to carry up to 100 tons of cargo directly to the lunar surface, including rovers, habitats, and other payloads necessary for establishing a sustainable human presence on the moon. The campaign will begin with one Starship launched from Starbase for an extended mission in Earth orbit. This flight will collect data on the vehicle's propulsion and thermal behavior over time, including long-term cryogenic fuel storage and boil-off characteristics. Then, a second Starship will launch to rendezvous with the first one to demonstrate in-space propellant transfer from one ship to another. The new Starship V3 vehicles will feature dedicated refueling interfaces, allowing them to act as tankers when equipped with additional probe connectors. Even the ground fueling ports have been redesigned to support in-orbit refueling operations. To make the rendezvous possible, Starship will rely on Dragon Eye navigation sensors, a proven system that SpaceX has used for years on its Dragon spacecraft during dozens of successful dockings with the ISS. These sensors have already undergone separate tests to validate their performance when integrated with Starship. Additionally, SpaceX has been flying experimental propellant mass sensors on every recent Starship test flight. These use radio frequency measurements to precisely track the amount of fuel remaining under microgravity conditions. In simple terms, proving this highly complex technology will require multiple incremental tests. And that's why achieving a stable and reliable Starship V3 is the core foundation before anything else can move forward. So, are you excited to see that day come sooner? If you are, drop a Go SpaceX, Go HLS in the comments to show your support.